White Sox have the lead 1-0 as we go to the top of the third here at Comerica Park. Mario and Pemba, Ron Allen, and a special guest with us here this afternoon, Chet Lemon. Man, I tell you what, Chet, for a lot of kids and a lot of guys my age, you were the guy back in the Motor City in the 80s. Of course, a member of the uh, 84 World Championship team. The Legacy Award today was presented to you, the Willie Horton Legacy Award. Welcome back to the Motor City. What was that like to get that award? Oh, it was special. You know, first of all, I admire Willie Horton. He's a just a great gentleman. You know, you you, you hope that uh, that one day that people would view you as such. Um, but just a great honor for me, for all of our kids. I think back in Florida, they're all tweaked out. They're <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. They're they're really all pumped up and fired up. So it, it's really it was a great honor to come back to Detroit. It's like coming home, and, and you know all the fans and. The 84 World Championship, seeing some of the people there, kids now, and just a great experience. I love it. Chet, what are you doing with yourself these days? Man, you look fantastic. What have you been up to? Just working hard, Ron. You know how it is. I mean, you, you when you're working with those youngsters, they you can tell them, but unless you can show them, <laughs> they don't want to hear it. Right? They say, come on, you know. Yeah, exactly. Show, show me how you do that, coach. You know, so it, it's been great. And, you know, being out with, there with them has really kind of kept me you know active and, and moving and having a great time and you know it's been a great experience for me you know first of all being able to work with some of you know what I consider to be the biggest investment we have which is our kids mm -hmm. and uh, to be able to work with them and, and to still to have some influence on them and they listen and hold fast to everything you say so it's just been pretty special for me Rod. yes now you the organization is what Chet Lemons juice I love that name that is awesome but uh, talk about that you work with kids and you produce a lot of pretty good players well you know it, you might find this hard to believe but we've had over 50 first round draft choices come wow. out of our program and almost every year the last couple of them, you know uh, Gordon you know Flash Gordon mm -hmm. We've had his boy. They came out a couple of years ago. We had um, Br uh, Brad Miller, the youngster that plays shortstop for um, for the uh, uh, Rays. That was one of our guys. Zach uh, Grinky too. Huh? Zach Grinky, Casey Kochman, Sean Burnett, Billy Butler, Ricky Weeks, Jamal That's Weeks. That's a lot of talent. A lot of guys. They all came through had. your, all your of program. Them. I worked with every last one of them. Good for you. Yeah, it's great. You ought to read some of the articles. I know that Prince and Weeks, um, when they uh, were in the big leagues their first year together, they were talking about how, you know, we've experienced this, you know, a long time ago playing with Coach Lemon. So, <laughs> you know, it's been pretty special for me and, and watching those guys, you know, um, you know, I threw out the first pitch, uh, I think, uh, during the playoffs uh, a couple of years ago against Kansas City, and Billy Butler was out there. He came out of the day, I came out and stood the whole plate, and I told him, I said, we can't be out here too long. They got a time thing that they're doing. He said, well, Coach, we're going to have lunch when you get back home. So it's been pretty special, and I still have a good relationship with all those guys, so it's really neat. Special to get back on the field, though, get on that mound at this, ball, this ballpark and throw that first pitch, wasn't it? It was. It was, right? It was pretty special. And like I said, just seeing all the people, seeing Smake again, yeah. <laughs> all the guys, it's just it's just great. It's just a great feeling. Chet, I heard a story yesterday. We were talking. There's a uh, fair ball down the third base line off the bat of Saladino. Avila's going to head to third base. They're going to stop in there in Saladino with a two-base hit. You were saying that your entire career, you used one, exactly one glove, which I find hard to believe. Tell me about that. One glove. I, you know how you you become very comfortable sure. with something? And I just stayed with that. I felt good about it. They sewed it up. They <laughs> stitched it up. The, you should have saw that it. That thing was, was ugly. Uh, it was. It was. <laughs> I have to admit, even for... It, it was it was so bad. There it is. There it is right there. It was, where, where is it? it? Was yeah, flimsy. That, that's it. That's the one. That's the one right there. And you couldn't even see the R on anymore. <laughs> Rawlings, <laughs> seriously, Rawlings came to me and asked me. They said that uh, can we sew at least the R on it so that people can see that it's a Rawlings glove. Nice. And uh, you know, so anyhow, it. Yeah, that's one glove. I stayed with that. I remember we were in Cleveland one day, and the guys took the glove and hit it. And I didn't have another glove to go out there with. I would toe Sparky, Skipper, <laughs> told them they better come up with that glove. <laughs> and one of the clubhouse kids brought it to me. They would never tell who had my glove. But it, 
<laughs> it was funny. You went straight to the chief then. You told Sparky no glove, no play. That's exactly right. I was straight. Skipper, I'm not going out there without my glove. And Sparky got it for you. Yes, he did. He got my glove for me. So it was great. It was great. Hey, Chad, on a more serious note, obviously it's an African-American Negro League weekend here. And we grew up in California where we played baseball all the time in the inner city on Saturdays and Sundays Chet Brewer used to get all the athletes in an area we'd go to a park and play and you grew up with Eddie Murray and yeah Ozzy Smith and all those guys yes. what is it going to take for you know baseball to to get African Americans back in the game and playing the way that we played it when we grew up well you know it's interesting you said that because we went to Major League Baseball actually they came to us and and Dave Dombrowski had something to do with it he he actually had um he had um, a committee. Yeah, and they, what happened was that uh, they came to us and asked us to put together a proposal. We put together a proposal. Some of the things that we brought out was that baseball is becoming so expensive, and the way that players are being seen now is different than what it used to be. You know, they used to go to the high school or whatever and see the kids play or go to where we played like at Connie Mac. The scouts would come out and see us play and, and things like that. Uh, but it doesn't happen like that now. You have to go to these smorgasbord events, board events where you have uh, hundreds of teams. And you got hundreds of scouts and colleges there. But you get to see so much talent. But the problem is a lot of the African-American kids can't afford to, to go to these events. These events are 3,000. I know my kids went 20, to Yeah, 2750, the perfect game events, the prospect wire events, uh, the prospect select events. All these events that they have now uh, is, is just so expensive, almost cost oh, prohibitive. Yeah. That's why a lot of our kids are choosing basketball mm -hmm. and football. You know, all you need is a pair of sneakers. Let's go, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, you know, we made a proposal. They, they like what we said. They told us they were going to approve it. And um, so we're still waiting. Actually, we uh, they came down. Uh, Tony Regan, uh, came, he's over amateur sports with right. League Baseball, came in about former uh, general manager. Yes, in and, with, and with Anaheim, <laughs> came in a couple of months ago. Uh, came to see our operation, was very impressed, and told us that they uh, are very interested in what we had to say and see if we couldn't work something out. So we're still kind of like waiting uh, to see what's going to happen and transpire with that, but. We do really want to see our kids. I think that what our fans are not getting a chance to see is probably some of the most talented athletes in the country play baseball because they're choosing other sports. Right. And it's just because of finances, mm. not being able to afford. But we got to get them in there. We got to get more folks that are willing to work with our kids and really teach them how to play the game and play the game the right way. Mm -hmm. Talking with Chet Lemon here in the booth today, who is uh, honored with the uh, Legacy Award, the Willie Horton Legacy Award, as we wrap up Negro Leagues weekend here at the ballpark. And Chet, you know, we showed a graphic of all of your accomplishments uh, as a player. Now, you played for both of these teams, the White Sox and the Tigers. I know you had special memories, probably in both cities, but when you talk about your stay in Detroit and you come back to the city, what is the one thing, if there is one thing, that you remember the most about playing, whether at Old Tiger Stadium or in Detroit? Well, it, it, Detroit obviously is home for me because this is where we experienced all the success that we did in Major League Baseball. And when you talk about, you know, our accomplishments, they talk about Detroit. And, you know, Rob, my teammate sitting here right next to me, he can tell you that we, you know, we fought hard to accomplish the things that we did. And it, it was an honor. And, and playing here in Detroit, it was just unbelievable. What a great city to play in. Um, there is no greater city than Detroit because they love their sports. And I was fortunate to be a part of it and just so excited about being back here today and being honored with the award, the Legacy Award. What does Spark Sparky mean to you? It meant a lot. You know, Skipper was important. You know, when he was inducted into the Hall of Fame, um, he mentioned, you know, he mentioned me. And it is Did he? Great. Yes. It's unbelievable that uh, he called you Chester. Yeah, he did. <laughs> hey, hey, Dusty Bud, you know, yeah. that was Gates uh, Brown. Wasn't it? Yeah, the Gates and all of us. Let me tell you about Skipper, though. He, you know, the funny thing about it, when I retired from Major League Baseball and we started Chet Lemon School of Baseball, Sparky sat on our board and he was just a joy to have around because I didn't have to say anything in our meetings because 
Sparky just took over. <laughs> he came in and started telling stories about baseball, all the people that were sitting on the board. They didn't want to talk about baseball. They didn't want to talk about Skipper. You know, anything that he had to say, he just mesmerized the, the group, and it was just always fun to have him around. And he, he was just, like you said, he was the best. He, he was great for players that were already established in the game, you know, because um, we knew what we had to do, and we knew Sparky wanted to win, and no matter what, if you go out there and do what you had to do to win, then you were going to be okay with Skipper. So it, it was great playing for Skip. He was he was the best. Oh, and two on Abreu here with two on and two outs, chatting with Chuck Lemon as we uh, play here at Comerica Park today. And uh, Chuck, what was it like to cover all that ground in center field <laughs> at Tiger Stadium, man? What, 440? Um, Unbelievable. I yeah. think that's what made me the player that I was. Well, they all leaned on you, right? Yeah. Said, you check, hey, go get it. Hey, look, when I was playing with the Chicago at Ralph Gar and Richie Zest, they stood on right field line and left field line. Sometimes I don't even think they brought their gloves out there. <laughs> and then after I came to Detroit and I had to, you know, had the privilege of playing with Larry Herndon most of the time and, and Gibby on the other side most of the time, I think the biggest thing was that. After a ball was hit to me, if I went to the left center field gap, I think it's a tough play, right? <laughs> I look up. Them guys are already in the dugout. I mean, they are. I mean, all I see is their numbers. I said, if I ever dropped the ball, I ain't got nobody to throw it to. <laughs> Jack, it's <laughs> always, always great to be with you. Thanks very much. Thanks, Good Mario. Day. I appreciate right. it. Thank you, sir. All right, the great, great to see you. All right, always. All right. Good seeing you, buddy.